embrace solutions which call for deep structural socio-economic transformation, unquote. Another communist, Alexei Kovilov, spoke at an evening meeting held at Windstar, Colorado in August 1985 and gave the participants in attendance a surprise presentation. He spoke about the 12th World Festival of Youth and Students held in Moscow a few months prior to his lecture. He said, quote, There were three programs. The first was political and dealt with the various issues of peace and disarmament. The second was dedicated to environmental issues and to the new international economic order." Unquote. The alleged need for a change in the basic way things are done is consistent with the teachings of the father of communism, Karl Marx. He's not really the father of communism, but it's a, it's a name that's been tagged onto him. You see, he was just a hack writer hired by the mystery religion of Babylon to write the Communist Manifesto. It was not his idea but he's reaped the benefits of it, if you can call them benefits. But he co-authored the Communist Manifesto with Frederick Engels, another hack writer, in 1848. Mr. Marx wrote that the communists, quote, openly declare that their ends can be attained only by the forcible overthrow of all existing social conditions, unquote. Nesta Webster, a writer on the subject of conspiratorial organizations in the past, wrote this in her book entitled Secret Societies, quote, The revolution desired by the leaders of world revolution is a moral and spiritual revolution, an anarchy of ideas by which all standards set up throughout 19 centuries shall be reversed, all honored traditions trampled underfoot, and above all, above all, the Christian ideal finally obliterated, unquote. Some of the Catholic popes in the past have commented on the major changes coming in the future. One such pope was Pope Pius XI, who wrote the following in 1937. Communism has behind it occult forces for which a long time have been working for the overthrow of the Christian social order." Unquote. One of the popes who preceded him, Pope Pius XI, or excuse me, Pope Pius IX, wrote this in November 1846 about the changes that he saw in the future. Quote, that infamous doctrine of so-called communism is absolutely contrary to the natural law itself, and if once adopted, would utterly destroy the rights, property, and possessions of all men, and even society itself." Unquote. Now, don't get all worked up about what the Pope says, because they have succeeded now with this Pope in putting one of their own upon the throne of the Vatican. It had long been their dream and now it is true. And the bans have been lifted against Catholics joining secret societies. Many of the hierarchy of the Vatican belong to the secret societies, the Freemasons, Propaganda II, etc., etc., etc. You will find an obelisk, <laughs> the symbol of the phallus, the penis of Osiris, in the Vatican courtyard. If you don't believe me, go look. Another individual who wrote about the future was Dr. Jose Arguelles of an organization known as the Planet Art Network. Dr. Arguelles wrote, quote, Also implicit in all these events is a call for another way of life, another way of doing things, a redistribution of global wealth, in short, a new world order, unquote. Now, just what the future society was that these people are talking about was described in a brief manner by Marilyn Ferguson in her book entitled The Aquarian Conspiracy, and she wrote this, quote, The new world is the old, transformed, unquote. Another clue about what is in store for the future world was offered by Dr. James H. Billington, who received his doctorate as a Rhodes, 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 Rhodes scholar, where have you heard that before? You have a Rhodes Scholar sitting in the Oval Office right now. Received his doctorate as a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford University and has taught at Harvard and Princeton Universities. He wrote this in his book entitled Fire in the Minds of Men. Quote, This book seeks to trace the origins of a faith, perhaps the faith of our time. What is new is the belief that a perfect secular order will emerge from the forcible overthrow of traditional authority." Unquote. You hear that? They believe a perfect secular order will emerge 
Nothing perfect will ever emerge from the minds of imperfect men, and no men will ever be ruled by other imperfect men in a, any kind of a perfect utopian order, secular or otherwise. That is why we must be eternally vigilant, eternally vigilant that these future changes would involve force and slavery was confirmed by B.F. Skinner, chairman of the psychology department at Harvard University. In his book entitled Beyond Freedom and Dignity, Dr. Skinner has been called the most influential of living American psychologists by Time magazine. So the world should listen to the professor when he speaks. The magazine told the reader what the message of Professor Skinner's book was. Quote, we can no longer afford freedom, and so it must be replaced with control over man, his conduct, and his culture." Unquote. Not long ago in the Los Angeles Times, there was an article called 10 Forecasts for the Coming Decade. One of these was chemical or electronic implants to control individual behavior on a 24-hour basis. Another student of these changes is Alvin Toffler, who wrote this in his book entitled The, the Third Wave. And you should read everything that he's written, by the way, because what he's writing is what is coming. Quote, a new civilization is emerging in our lives. This new civilization brings with it new family styles, changed ways of working, loving and living, a new economy, new political conflicts, and beyond all this, an altered consciousness as well. The dawn of this new civilization is the single most explosive fact of our lifetimes." Unquote. Another scientist involved in commenting upon the future changes was Dr. Carl Sagan, and he's observed this, quote, It's clear that sometime, relatively soon in terms of the lifetime of the human species, people will identify with the entire planet and the species." Unquote. Now the reason, folks, why these changes are necessary was explained by Manley P. Hall, perhaps the world's leading authority on esoteric words and language. He was a 33rd degree Freemason. He wrote in his book entitled Lectures on Ancient Philosophy, quote, The time has not yet arrived when the average man is strong enough or wise enough to rule himself, unquote. And he explained who he considered worthy enough to rule those on the world considered by the experts to be incapable of governing themselves. He wrote this, quote, Never will peace reign upon the earth until we are ruled by the fit. And who is the fit? <laughs> Why, them, of course. The illumined, the priest of the mystery religion of Babylon. Mr. Hall even indicated that these changes would occur soon. He wrote this comment in his book previously cited, quote, 100 years ago, meaning in 1884, folks, it was predicted that within a few centuries men would revert to the gods of Plato and Aristotle. We may all look forward with eager anticipation to that nobler day when the gods of philosophy once more shall rule the world, unquote. Aldous Huxley, in his book called Brave New World, revisited quotes a character called the Grand Inquisitor in one of Fyodor Mikhailovich Dostoevsky's parables as saying this, quote, In the end they, the people, will lay their freedom at our, the controller's feet, and say to us, Make us your slaves, but feed us, unquote. The Tucson Citizen newspaper of November the 3rd, 1988, printed a photograph of a group of people involved in a march for literacy and it clearly demonstrated that at least some people in America are now asking their government to make them their slaves. The picture showed a demonstrator carrying a ticket sign that read, quote, Uncle Sam, we want you to support us, unquote. Mr. Huxley gave us a date when we could expect these changes to occur. He wrote the following in his book written in 1958, quote, The 21st century will be the era of world controllers, unquote. And then he told us why these controllers would not fail. Quote, the older dictators fell because they could never supply their subjects with enough bread, enough circuses, enough miracles and mysteries. Under a scientific dictatorship, education will really work, with the result that most men and women will grow up to love their servitude and will never dream of revolution. There seems to be no good reason why a thoroughly scientific dictatorship should ever be overthrown." Unquote.